Hello, this video is about the most important term in Buddhist metaphysics. Now, the next 17 points are going to be about the spirit, or the mind, or the citta, usually translated from the Pali as mind. You might think that the next 17 points might be slightly dry, but I assure you, this if you're interested in Buddhism at all, this list is the most important, concise summation of what Buddhism is and is not the paraphrasable core, if you will, of Buddhism, i.e. the citta, translated as mind, but actually means spirit. In the Greek, the term would be nous. Let's get into what Buddhism is and is not, discussing this one particular term that is the alpha and the omega of Buddhism, the entire crux both of wisdom and of samadhi and sati, usually translated as meditation, absorption, or jhana. In other words, the entire basis of Buddhahood revolves around this one noun only, and it's 17 proprietary designations in scripture which are given to no other noun, to no other term, period. Let's forget about anatta and anatman and set that on the back burner first for a couple of videos. I've had a lot of requests from people discussing, okay, and we know that anatta means that there is no denial of the atman in scripture, but let's get to the heart of what Buddhism is. What is its core principle? I've prepared a list for you here, and I assure you, if you pay attention and you just follow with me just for a few minutes, you're going to see that this list is extremely important. You want to take note of this. If you have any interest in Buddhism at all, this list is extremely important. These 17 designations are made in scripture only given as regards to the citta, the mind, the new, sort of the spirit. No other proper noun is given such a status. Nothing but the citta itself is so lauded in so many proprietary and important ways. There is no other higher acclaim in Buddhist doctrine, in Buddhist sutta, than these 17 points given to the noun citta. The purification of one's own citta. This is meant the doctrine of the Buddha, Buddha Sasana, the Ganakaya 2.49. How important is that? Nothing else is so deemed in scripture other than the citta. How is it that one is called a Buddha? Majimanakaya 2.144. The answer? Gnosis, that the citta, purified, vishudam, such is how one is deemed a Buddha. In other words, citta vishudya, the purification of the citta, is equal to Buddhahood. How important is that? Well, that's utmost importance. That would be the core metaphysics, not only of Buddhism, but also of Platonism and all forms of mysticism, by the way. Whether you translate citta as mind, or spirita sancta, or use the Greek term nous, really isn't that important. The important thing is that this one word, the citta, is the most important thing and is the definition of Buddhahood, of Tathagatahood. Point two, the citta is the only thing, the only noun in scripture which is said to obtain the state of being taintless. Anasava, Diganakaya 2.35, Nijinakaya 1.501, Nijinakaya 3.20, Samirinakaya 3.45, etc., etc. Point three, citta is the only thing, the only noun in Sutta which is said to be obtained or gathered within the realm of immortality. He gathers his citta within the realm of immortality. Amate adatuya. This is tranquility. This is that which is most excellent. Majimanakea 1.436. This is immortality. That being the liberated citta. Vimutta citta. Majimanakea 2.265. Angotaranakea 1.282. He gathers the citta inside the immortal realm. Amate adatuya. Point four. The citta is the only noun in scripture which is said to be the basis aramana for parinirvana, parinibbana in Nepali. Said immediately after the passing of Gautama's physical death. Diganakaya 2.157, no longer with subsist by in-breath, out-breath. So he, Gautama, who is steadfast in the citta, inherently quelled from all desires, the mighty sage is passed beyond. Within mind, citta, limitless, as meant Brahma, he no longer bears sensations, illumined and unbound, Nibbana. His citta is definitely ahu liberated, vimutta. The taintless anasava citta is equal to paranibbana, right there in Diganakaya 2.157 as well as countless other passages. Samirinakaya 3.45, the citta being so liberated and arisen from the defilements, one is fixed in the soul as liberation. One is quelled in fixation upon the soul. Quelled within the soul, one is unshakable. Most, pop, most important adjective, attribute given to any noun in Sutta, unshakable. So being unshakable, the very soul, one is thoroughly unbound, Paranabhanda. This said, the liberated citta, which does not cling, means Nabhanda, 
How important is that? Majimei Nikkei two out of four, that's sixty-eight. In other words, Nibbana is equal to the Vimutta Chitta. There are countless such passages. Point five: the Chitta is the only thing, the only noun in Sutta which is differentiated from the five khandas. This is so important. If you don't understand this, then you're too stupid to be watching this video, and you're too stupid to be investigating Buddhism. I'm sorry, but I have to say that. The only thing which is differentiated from the five khandas, Rupa, Vedana, Sana, Sankara, and Vinyana, in scripture, in Sutta, not my opinion, not my conjecture, not my translation, but what the Pali actually says. Majimini K1.436 and Angle Tarn in the K4.422, same passage. Whatever forms, feelings, perceptions, experiences, or consciousness, i.e. the five khandas, these he sees to be without permanence, anicca, as suffering, as dukha, as ill, as a plague, a boil, a sting, a pain, an affliction, as foreign, as otherness, as empty, shunyata, as selfless, with a capital S, anatata, in the Pali. So he turns the chitta, he turns it away from these five khandas. Once again, we have something that is other than the five khandas in scripture. In other words, there is liberation, there is immortality, there is other than the psychophysical, i.e. the five khandas. There he gathers the chitta within the realm of immortality. Amatuyadatya. This is tranquility, this is that which is most excellent. You understand this? The only thing which is differentiated from the five khandas is turned away from them. And it's inflexed back upon itself, i.e. synthesis or samadhi or assimilation, or in the Greek it would be epistroph, is the chitta. Majimini Kea 1.511 For a long time I've been cheated, treated, and hoodwinked by my chitta, meaning the chitta of a fool, the commoner, the putujana, meaning the common idiot, the common boob. For when grasping, I've been grasping under form. When I'm grasping, I've been grasping under feelings. When I'm grasping, I'm grasping under perceptions, etc., experiences, and consciousness. In other words, the chitta has been that which has been grasping after the five khandas. This isn't my translation. This is what the Pali actually says. Majimini Kea 1.511 In other words, the chitta of the fool, given primordial ignorance, or avidya, however avidya literally is the attribute of the absolute, we'll get into that in another video, is grasping on to the five khandas. Is the principle behind the grasping. Okay? Point six. The chitta is the only thing which is said to be perfected by samadhi and panna, wisdom. Steadfast in the soul means one is supremely fixed within the chitta. Sila Kanda Vagata Kata 1.168 The purification of one's own chitta, this means the light, jyoti, with one, within one's own mind, or chitta, is the very soul. Atano, Dignakaya 2, Arakata 2.479 Sila Kanda Vagata Kata 1.168 Steadfast in the soul, tetatati, chitta, means steadfast, fixed, permanent, unmoving. Chitta, tetatati, steadfast in the soul means one is supremely fixed within the mind. Supatita chitta. In other words, supatita chitta, supremely fixed within the chitta, is equal to, is the same thing as saying, fi supremely fixed within the soul. Angotara Nikaya 1.196 With chitta emancipated from ignorance, the only now which is said to be freed of avidya or ignorance. However, avidya means something much more intricate than ignorance. This designation means the soul has become Brahma or Brahmabhu. Angotara Nikkei 1.186. How important is that passage? Extremely. There is no higher, higher law in scripture. Majima Nikkei 1.213. The collected and quelled mind, or chitta, is the supreme soul. Mahata. Steadfast in the soul. Tetatati means one is steadfast in one's true nature. True nature or self-nature. Most Buddhists know this term as svabhava, or in the Pali, sabhava. Steadfast in one's own true nature. Tita sabhava, or tita sabhava. It's taken apart out of Kata 3.4. Chitta is the only thing which is said to be the basis or the medium, the locus, for the recollection, smriti, recollection of past lives. In other words, the transmigrant. The whole notion of rebirth versus reincarnation in Buddhism is complete BS. I'll get into that in another video. There's no such thing as Buddhism teaches rebirth versus reincarnation. The only noun in Buddhism in scripture which is said to be the basis, the core and nexus, the locus, of recollection of past lives, is the chitta, the chitta. He directs the chitta to the recollection of past lives. They're going to take 1.181. There are countless passages such as this. I don't need to go on. You can find the rest of them yourself. Eight. Chitta is the only thing which is said to be the foundation of itself, i.e. its own foundation, not based upon anything, i.e. a foundation of its own, an aramana. Literally means without any foundation. Without any foundation means it is its own foundation. That's a metaphysical point. 
If you don't understand that, maybe you need to wise up and maybe study a little philosophy or some metaphysics. Without a foundation means it is the foundation. Hence making the chitta the absolute. Pariyatakata 2.478, the sovereign mind, with, which is its own support, anaramana, means the sovereign chitta is the foundation. With one's own chitta as its own foundation equals the Atman. Dampara Arakara 4.26. Majimanakara Arakara 2.297. Nibbana is the foundation, that being the emancipated chitta. Samirinaka Arakara 2.583. Emancipation is meant the foundation, that being the establishment of the emancipated mind. Anguttara 1.138. Supermundane Samadhi is the foundation of Nibbana, that being the exceedingly coiled mind or chitta. Point 9. Chitta is the only thing which is compared to an indestructible diamond. Angotana Nikkei 1.124. What follower is a being who has a diamond mind? Vajita Puma Chitta. That one who has destroyed taints, Anasava, and has both liberated the Chitta and is liberated by wisdom. That is uh, Chitta Vimutta and Panna Vimutta, the two types of liberation spoken of not only in Buddhism, but also spoken of in Advaita Vedanta and the Upanishads, which would be Nirguna Brahma and Svaguna Brahma. Or in the Pali, is Anupidisa Nibbana and Saupidisa Nibbana. That's the point for another video. The two types of liberation. Just as there's nothing which a diamond cannot cut, be it a stone or a gem, the diamond to Chitta is referred to as that which is made perfect by wisdom and Samadhi. That's another point for another video as well. I could do these videos in my sleep, by the way. I've debated them for so many years. I could literally do them half awake. Point 10. The entire Arya Atanjika Maga, i.e. the Aryan Eightfold Path, is itself said to be both being and it ends with the Chitta as its basis. Majimana Kaya 1.197 followers of Brahma life does not live for Brahmachara, by the way, meaning the path followed by, by Gautama's Arahas and Bhikkhu and Bhikkhunis. It does not live for the sake of gains, honors, or acclaim, nor does it live for the virtuousness, nor absorption, nor the gnosis and insight. This Brahma life, this Brahmachara, is lived for the soul. Preeminent purpose of emancipation of the chitta alone, which is it has as this path, the liberation of the chitta as the quintessential final core. Unquote. Majimina K. 1.197. How important is that? That, on a level of 1 to 10, is a 20 when it comes to importance in Buddhist metaphysics. That scores a 20 on a level of 1 to 10. Do you understand? Are you following me here? Majimini K. 1.301. What is Samadhi? I need the culmination of the entire year, entire Ariyatanga Kamaga, entire Arya full path. Samadhi, friends, is for making the Chitta sovereign. In other words, not dependent. The reversal of ignorance, which of course would be wisdom, absorption. The full and complete synthesis of the chitta upon itself. No longer does the chitta go out after the khandas. It is a complete inversion, the removal of avidya. Point 11. The chitta is the only thing, the only nano sutta, which is said to be goes towards the light or the heaven realm. Samirinakaya 3.370. His chitta goes heaven bound to auspiciousness, not heaven in the Christian, the Judeo Christian sense but in the supernal sense, the sense of the absolute, the supernal heaven, quote-unquote, sense of actually obtaining the absolute. Most importantly, you may not understand this until you study metaphysics or philosophy in general. Number 12, most importantly, the is the only thing that is said to be obtained the freedom from nescience or ignorance or agnosis, Ivedium, in Jimmy Decay 1.279. With his steadfast chitta, perfectly purified, perfectly illumined, stainless, utterly perfect, pliable, sturdy, fixed, everlastingly determinate, he directs his chitta towards the gnosis of the destruction of defilements, knowing thus and seeing thus, his chitta is emancipated, suvi chitasa, from sensual desires, his chitta is liberated from becoming, bhava, very important, his most important point right here, is the chitta is emancipated from avidya. Or avidya in Sanskrit, ignorance. Important. Thirteen. The only proper noun which is said to obtain the state of emancipation, vimutta, is the chitta. The only noun which is said to be liberated. The spiritus sancta, the noose, the self. The atman and the chitta in scripture, by the way, this is a point for another video, are not differentiated, nor is it in any branch of Advaita Vedanta, the Upanishads, or any branch of general metaphysics and mysticism. 
the spirit or the mind. However, in English, we don't differentiate mind from consciousness. So we think of it as the lump of flesh between our ears, i.e. the brain. The mind and the consciousness is there. And in English, we don't differentiate that. However, in all forms of metaphysics, of ontology, there is a distinct differentiation made between the mind and the consciousness. The consciousness is consubstantial. The mind is not. It is wrapped up Duda Avidya and is coordinate within the psychophysical body. We'll talk about that later and be a point for another video. As per the superior versus the inferior path, the citta is the sole basis of the superior path. Point 14. Arya Chittasa Anasava Chittasa Arimanaga Samigino. The Aryan Chitta, the taintless Chitta, this is that which the Aryan path is endowed with. Majjhimanikaya 3.72. How important is that? Arimaga Samigino. Arya Chittasa Anasava Chittasa. Very important. Point 15. Chitta is the only thing which is deemed to be the highest absolute. Majjhimanikaya 1.298. Emancipation of the mind of the Chitta is the highest absolute. Same passage. Of all types of unmanifest emancipations of the citta, the fixed, unshakable emancipation of the citta is the highest supernal. Point 16. The entire basis for Buddhism itself is said to be for and regards to the citta. How important is this? Point 16. The purification of one's own citta. This is the doctrine of the Buddha. How is it, as I'd said before, how is it that one is called a Buddha? Notice that the citta is purified, the shurya. Such is how one is deemed a Buddha. In other words, Buddhahood equals Vimutta Chitta, vice versa. Vimutta Chitta equals Buddhahood. How important is that? Well, it doesn't get any more important than that. Okay? Majjhimanikaya 2.144, Anguttara Nikaya 1.6. I do not have disciples insight into anything or any Dhamma which, when made to become and made to expand, brings greater bliss than the Chitta. Not my translation, not my opinion, not my conjecture. This is what the Pali says. If you want to go learn Pali and spend 15 years to do it fine, you'll come to the same conclusion. Even my detractors, even the Theravadans, the soul-denying nihilists, they translate this the same way. This is the back door to getting around their whole denial of the self, the soul, the thing. We can forget about anatta and atman. Let's just discuss the citta, okay? Two are the same term. Metaphysically, both are the self, obviously are a condic, are not condic, are not psychophysical. There is nothing that brings greater bliss than the citta. The citta followers, when made to become, made to expand, in other words, synthesis, sort of the fulfillment of jhana samadhi, epistros, the culmination of the via negativa, the apophasis, the complete objective negation of all which you are not. Isokaya namaisata, none of these things are myself, my soul. The fruition of samadhi, the fruition of wisdom. So, I mean, okay, 1.126, these followers absorb the citta, flawless, having assimilated the soul, a charioteer, in control of the reins. Sages like them guard the supernal power. That's Samyuna Nikaya 1.26. By the way, Samyuna Nikaya, book 1, right next to the Suranapada and the Udana and Iributaka, is the oldest of the oldest sections. Even the very best quote-unquote Pali translators, of which there are only a very, very small handful, and I mean a handful, in the entire world. They racked their brains out and they've already pulled their hair out. Look at me as an example. Trying to translate the ancient Pali of this particular book. Point 17, last point here. And there are actually many more points, but I'm not going to bore you with some of the finer nuances of metaphysics as regards to the Chitta. Point 17, the Chitta is the only noun, the only thing in Sutta, which is deemed to achieve freedom from becoming. Baba. All things as become must pass. The born, the made, the become, the create has no other fate than the past, just as they have arisen. The philosophical implication that the citta can transcend causation becoming cannot be denied as a metaphysical quintessential super importance. In other words, on a scale of 1 to 10, again, this is another 20. My citta emancipated from desires, kama, emancipated from becoming, bhava, emancipated from nescience or ignorance or agnosis, avidya, emancipation, emancipation at last. There exists no fruit more exquisite and perfect than this. Deganikeya 1.84. This is not my translation. When you look at the original Pali or even other translations, you'll even read the same thing. The no soul deniers, when it comes to the citta, will lay it out for you. They're always on guard when it comes to Pali passages regarding the Atman. They fudge over it. They translate as yourself, myself, himself. They try to undercut it. But when it comes to the citta, they say, well, that's okay. They, they translate it that way. However, the citta and the Atman are not differentiated in the Sutta, both are one and the same thing. 
In another video, we'll get onto the point of, in English, we don't have a differentiation between mind and consciousness. We think of it as coordinate within the psychophysical, i.e. the brain. In short, I'll tell you this. As far as Buddhism metaphysics, and metaphysics in general, Advaita Vedanta and Upanishadic thought, all agree on this point, by the way, as well as Platonism. Consciousness, in simplex terms, is the coordinate and the consubstantial light. If the light is the citta, then the coordinate and consubstantial light is the consciousness, or the vinya. What does that mean? A white light falls on a red wall, red wall comes off, red light comes off of that red wall to your eyes. That red light would be red consciousness. White light on a blue wall, blue light comes to your eyes, you see a blue wall. That blue light that comes to your eyes is consubstantial to that blue wall. That would be blue consciousness. The coordinate light, before it ever makes contact with and passes through a filter, or is reflected off of a filter. In this sense, in the metaphysics, we speak of the psychophysical. In other words, the illumined person. The radio, which is not actually inside the radio signal, but which is coordinate to it. The quote-unquote little people inside the TV set, which is actually just the signal, which is not part of the TV set, nor is the signal part of the radio. You smash the radio, you smash the TV set, you still have the signal. That signal would be the chitta. This is the very simplex way for you to understand how, metaphysically, the consciousness is differentiated from the mind, because in English we don't have the connotation, denotation of how to differentiate the two. This is what it is meant in the actual metaphysics of monism. Buddhism, of course, is a variety of monism. It's a Romanic uh, uh, condensation of Upanishadic thought. This is also the principle of Advaita Vedanta and all of Upanishads, specifically Buddhism. I'll get into a later video where I've actually spent countless thousands of hours researching every occurrence of the term Vinyana, or consciousness is translated as differentiated from that of the chitta, meaning the noose, the mind, the spirit. Okay? Simply put, like I said, the chitta is the light. It is the signal. The coordinate, XYZ coordinate, locus, i.e. consubstantial. Consubstantial, you need to look up that term, consubstantial, what does it mean? In other words, it cannot exist without that psychophysical. White light passes through a red filter, red light comes to your eyes. Okay? That red light would be the red consciousness. In other words, without that filter, there is no red light. The red light being the consciousness. So white light is always there. I'm not going to talk about white lighters in the New Age movement. But without that psychophysical body, okay, there is no more consciousness. But that has nothing to do with the chitta, the noose, or the mind. Okay? This is the back door for getting around... I didn't create this. This is in doctrine. This is the back door for getting around the no-soul nonsense. They've built up a stainless door, modern Buddhism has, and it's clearly pointed out, okay? They think that there is no Atman. That's perfectly fine. I can debate them on the Ara Anatman doctrine all day long. Of course, there is no Ara Anatman doctrine. There is only the 22 nouns which are called Anatta, which are not the self, not the soul. The quickest way to get around them is my expertise in 15 plus years researching the chitta, or the noose, the mind, the spirit in Buddhist scripture. That's the door they're not used to getting attacked upon. It's like the burglar that came to the house that was built like a fortress, and the front door had six locks on it, it was solid stainless, but he went around to the back door and he found, well, the back door is the same, but the window is open. So he got inside the rear window and he completely ransacked the house. The quickest way to destroy the premise of modern Buddhism and its soul-denying nihilism, because it is a rancid heap of soul-denying nihilists, the Christian and Jewish rejects, rejects like, they hover around Buddhism like flies around a dung heap. Agnostics and atheists, all of them alike, They're, they believe that Buddhism is some form of moralistic humanism. The back door, or to the back window that's open, of course, is the chitta. I hope this video wasn't too dry or boring, but you need to understand that those 17 points I just pointed out to you regarding the chitta and the chitta alone in scripture, okay, is extremely important. If you have any interest at all, whether you hate me or not, whether my voice sucks or not, or whether you the like the way that I speak or have given this lecture to irrelevant. If you are a true seeker, if you care about investigating original Buddhism, okay, you need to make point, make note of these 17 points that I've made, because you're not going to read this anywhere, okay? I didn't pull this out of a book, okay? These are the translations I've been working on for 15 years. Pulling out all these occurrences where cheetah is proprietary, A, B, C, X, Y, Z. Super, super important. So like I said, most of these on a scale of 1 to 10 are a 20, as regards the metaphysics of Buddhism. Buddhahood equals the citta. The only thing which is liberated is the citta. The only thing which is said to be freed from avijja is the citta. The only thing that is said to gain amata, immortality, is the citta. On and on and on and on and on. 
There are 17 points. There are actually 29 that I've made list of and several more, but I'm not going to bore you with 18 through 29. I've brought to you currently in this little video 1 through 17. If you have any interest, let me restate it again, in Buddhism, whether you like me or not, I don't care. A true seeker is only interested in the truth, just as I am. Okay? Make note of these 17 points, and don't take my word for it. Investigate them yourselves. You'll find that they are correct, even in the bad translation by the soul deniers, because they're not used to getting attacked on the quote-unquote, what I call the chitta front. Okay? The spirit front, or the mind. Chitta is 99% of the time translated as mind. This creates a problem, like I said before, because in English we don't really differentiate mind from consciousness, but in metaphysics, in Buddhism, in monism, in, monism, in Platonism, in Advaita Vedanta, in the Upanishadic thought, mind and consciousness are succinctly differentiated. Once again, in the analogy of the signal versus the radio, the signal versus the TV set, the light versus the filter, and the, 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 the light, the consubstantial light, which has pass through that filter. White light through a red filter, you see red light after the filter. White light through a blue filter, you see blue light or blue consciousness or vinyan after that filter. Okay, that is consciousness. That is the analogy, specifically in the most condensed form I could give to you, of differentiating consciousness from mind in all branches of metaphysics, not just Buddhism. This isn't my opinion, this isn't my conjecture. This is countless endless years of pure, utter devotion, not working a job, not having to work a job. Okay? investigating this and this alone. Countless thousands of hours have been condensed down for you in just a small few minute video. I hope you take this and run with it. Okay? If you're interested in Buddhism at all, you make note of these 17 points. Thank you, and I'll talk about consciousness and anatta. And the next video I'll be discussing what is samadhi in actuality and give you a short little analogy. Tell you what actually jhana or samadhi is and is not. I'll give you a really simplex analogy and make things super clear to you very quickly.